it's Marissa and Shauna and today's video is going to be everything you need to know about your period so this is going to be kind of a period Q&A style video with the most frequently asked questions we get we get asked tons and tons of questions about periods and these are just some of the most common ones this video is also in collaboration with always the tampax and they were so nice to give us a doctor to answer these questions i'm your guys' big sister i'll give you all the big sister period advice you need but it's nice to kind of hear it from someone who's a gynecologist and who does this for a living the first 30,000 people who give this video a thumbs up are going to have a super awesome week thanks to Chester. Thanks to Chester. He going to make the magic happen. So yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. On to the questions. Okay, so the first question, how old should I be when I get my period? So every girl is different, but the most common age that girls will get it is in between the ages of 11 and 13 but some girls can get it as early as eight or nine and then some girls can get it as late as like 16. it really just depends on your body obviously everybody's gonna be different everyone's gonna have a different experience with their period so the next question is is it normal if i get my period for the first time and then it stops so it's common to have an irregular period every now and then, and especially when you first start getting your period, it can sometimes take a few years before your periods become regular. Also, the word irregular is kind of a personal word. You will get to know what's normal for your body. The most unpredictable periods are gonna be your first and second ones, but once you've had at least three periods, they should start to become more and more regular. Your period should happen at least every four days and no closer together than every 21 days so you can try keeping up with your period on either a calendar or a period app and once you've had your period for a couple years it should become much more predictable and consistent okay so next question do tampons hurt how do they make it so it doesn't hurt so one of the most common myths is that oh my gosh tampons are gonna hurt so much they're gonna hurt I should never ever ever use a tampon because it's gonna hurt so much tampons shouldn't hurt and if they do feel slightly uncomfortable then you're probably just nervous and tightening up your muscles down there so just take a deep breath try and relax that's definitely the best way practice with those tampons and some tips to make it more comfortable if you're inserting it into your vagina is to kind of point it at an angle towards your tailbone a little bit and this can also like help it be a little more comfortable if you're just trying to insert it straight up if your tampon feels uncomfortable after you've inserted it it might be because you haven't pushed it in far enough and i know that for me the first time i ever tried putting on a tampon I didn't push it in far enough and it felt uncomfortable and I was so confused as to why. So, but you really just have to push it in with um, the applicator as far as it'll go. So when you push in your tampon, your fingers should touch your skin before you push the plunger down. And that's how you know you're doing it right. So the next question, how do I ask my mom to buy me tampons? So when you're asking your mom to buy you a tampon, I think that the best way is to give her a reason why you want to start wearing tampons. Like if you need it to go swimming or running or if using pads is getting in the way of some of your just everyday school activities. Yeah, or if you have like a pool party or something you're going to and you just want that extra you know protection because i mean wearing a tampon to a pool party is going to make it easier it's just good to be aware of your options you don't always have to wear pads you can also wear tampons so next time you're at the store with your mom you can always just lead her in the direction of the pads and tampons aisle <laughs> mom let's go in this aisle there's something i want to show you <laughs> Yeah, and just ask for her advice on helping her choose which one it would be right for you. Yeah, it's like almost like something you guys can do together. Yeah. And even if ultimately you decide that you would rather stick to pads and tampons, it's just good to have that option. I didn't start using tampons until my first pool party. And then after that, I was like, okay, like this, now I feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. I can use it during regular periods as well. Yeah. They're not that bad. Yeah, they don't scare it. Mom, could you buy me some tampons? What do you need tampons for? Well, you know, I take a lot of dance classes and I don't want a pad showing through my leotard and then I also have swimming class and... Okay, maybe the Tampax Pearl. 
So the next question is, should you switch between using pads and tampons during your period to avoid toxic shock syndrome? So research actually shows that that tampon related toxic shock syndrome is actually related to absorbency. So the more absorbent the tampon, the higher the risk of TSS, the lower the absorbency, the lower the risk. So it's best to use the lowest absorbency tampon that will still help like manage your period. And it's also good to kind of switch off between using a pad and a tampon on your period. Like when you're sleeping, you can use a pad. And then during the daytime, if you're like exercising, you can use a tampon. Just kind of like find your own balance, your own rhythm when you're on your period. But I think like mixing and matching between pads and tampons can be good. Yeah, like I personally like wearing a pad when I'm sleeping all the time, just because with a tampon, you don't want to have to be wearing about like oh did I leave it in for too long so even if I'm wearing a tampon throughout the day like I'll usually switch to a pad at night so the next question is what do I need to know about toxic shock syndrome toxic shock syndrome is a rare but serious disease and to lower your risk try to use the lowest absorbency tampon. Okay, so symptoms of TSS are actually really similar to symptoms that you would get from the flu, like nausea, vomiting, high fever with rash. So if you're using a tampon and you start to like have these symptoms, take your tampon out immediately and go to the emergency room. By the way, guys, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, then you wanna go to the hospital immediately. Actually, if toxic shock syndrome is caught early, it's very treatable. So it's just good to be aware of what the symptoms are and signs to look for. Yeah. So that was our video. We hope you guys liked it and we hope you found it helpful. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and comment down below any questions you have about your period. If it's something that you're just too embarrassed to ask your mom or your friends, then just comment it down below and we'll yeah. try to answer as many as possible. And make sure to give this video a thumbs, thumbs up. up or as Chester likes to say, a panda thumbs up, because the first 30,000 people to give this video a thumbs up are gonna have a super awesome week. You're gonna have something really cool happen to you. In a week, you guys can comment what good happened to you. This video is sponsored by Always in Tampax. We love you guys so much. Mwah. Mwah. Big kiss and bye guys.